Um, it's Katha and Bo. Um, welcome to the Audience Matters Silakbo PH second segment on Mental Health Hour. In this episode, we will share a different side of us. While while the last one focused on us being artists or creators, this one focuses more on us as an audience that appreciates what these creators do. I mean, that's where it usually starts, right? You, you get into something, then you want to make something awesome. So today we're gonna talk about. Being fans of TV shows, you're an anime fan, right? Yeah, I'm an anime fan. Music, local music, or any form of pop culture and outward expression. We're going to talk about the products of, of culture. So if you consider yourself a weeb, a, a geek, g- or what else? What else is there? Oh, a Potterhead, a Whovian, oh, yeah, a Sherlock. British yeah, culture. There's, there's so many. <laughs> so yeah, whatever you identify with, you know, just sit back, relax, and... That's fandom. <laughs> sure. All right. So, Mental Health Hour. What is Mental Health Hour? It's a podcast community composed of Mental Health PH, Light Your Way, Tala Mental Wellness, and Silakbo PH. As organizations, we each choose a topic we would like to highlight and then take turns producing a podcast episode. So, Silakbo PH. Yep, we're the ones handling this one. <laughs> it's an effort to uplift stories in the context of mental health awareness. Art as we all know, is cathartic and it's a form of self-expression. So we want to uplift stories of mental health through creative means, through poetry, painting, playlists even, any medium that best expresses your story is welcome. This is because we hope that telling stories through this way will provide a safe space for those who have mental health needs, shed light on the importance of taking care of mental health for everyone, not just people with needs, but everyone, everyone. It's really a societal thing. And finally, to encourage the use of art as a healthy coping mechanism. So we're talking about fandoms and fans. And let's start with the definition because people today are so freaking philosophical, they'll debate anything. So So, the debate doesn't start here. It starts after the end of this podcast. So what is a fan, Kata? Okay, so according to Merriam-Webster, The brain, the best source. (laughs) Fan is an enthusiastic devotee. Sounds religious. I know, but... Uh, as of a sport or a performing art, ah, okay. usually as a spectator. That's the first. And the second is an ardent admirer or enthusiast as of a celebrity or a pursuit. Like, for example, science fiction fans. Oh, or like, you know, love team fans? Love team fans. Right, like. great. Okay. Fandom. What, what, how about fandom? Okay, fandom. Sounds like fans plus kingdom. <laughs> Right, in general, yeah, fandom, according again to Miriam Webster, um, <laughs> all the so fans much. as of a sport or the state or attitude of being a fan. But wait, I have a second definition, not from it's Miriam, Miriam Webster. Webster. Oh wait, my God, <laughs> we are triangulating our sources. <laughs> in one of our sources, right. um, who's fan, the source? Uh, fandom exploring the relationship. Uh, re- Exploring the relationship. Oh, so it's a paper. Yeah, it's a paper cool. between mental health and celebrity All worship right. among how, Filipinos. How did they define fandom? By uh, Mark e- Eric S. Reyes et al. from the University of Santo Tomas. Um, okay. They uh, cited uh, someone, uh, another article actually, by okay. Bus and. I don't know how to pronounce these names, but I'll try my best. It's yeah. Bus and San Bus? I. Cool. All right. Uh, in, Bus and Sandbus. Uh, in 2007, it's okay. basically for them, it's uh, uh, fandom entails an organized community of like-minded persons who are united in their devotion to a particular celebrity as well as participation and possibly self-identification with that community. Okay, that pretty much summarizes everything that Miriam Webster said. Yeah. <laughs> like an enthusiastic devotee, yep. an ardent admirer, Yep. the community of fans. Yeah. And even the state of mind and attitude of being a fan. So yeah. more or less, these two sources are anonymous in the way they define fans and fandoms. That's good. <laughs> so okay, move, moving on. So let's let's actually begin the fan girl. What are you into? I'm just generally all oh, right now. I'm yeah. really, I'm, I'm more of a. People use uh, think this is a derogatory term, but some people have come to accept and kind of accept this term. I'm. 
Honestly, I really am a weeb. <laughs> yeah, it's like an X Men first class, weeboo and proud. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. Um. So I'm generally into anime, manga, but right now I'm very into a uh, a Japanese um music rhythm it, game. It's come it? to encompass like Japanese pop culture as yeah, well, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not just anime and manga anymore. It's yeah. A, it's about the whole culture about uh, Japan. Japan. Yeah. So yeah. Right now, I'm into this game called, oh my god, Bandari or Bang Dream. Oh. It's, yeah. it's, it's fun. Bang Dream. That sounds, I mean, like, for an English speaker, that sounds kind of sketchy. But I know, you know, I know. Some look, people... Pagbigyan, they're some, like, the Japanese have... No, I have no idea why, why anyone... Why, but, I don't know. Because the yeah. Japanese niya is Bandari. La. Bandari. I, I don't know. Bandari. That's, that's the colloquial. Yeah. Yeah. But we... I think it's Bang Dream. Talaga. When they export, it became Bang Dream. I, I think, I have no idea anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but, but everyone was like, this is the sketchiest name yeah. ever and a lot of people love it. And I honestly think, I don't think the Japanese were being intentionally sexual here. I think when they said Bang Dream, they really thought, okay, these are just two English words that sound cool together. <laughs> I'm sure no, it because it's about bands. And you know how oh, drums I, and... Banging, yeah, banging. Um, Bang, so, head bang. Exactly, exactly. So, parang, <laughs> hindi na translate yung nuance na. But in our culture, bang is also like a euphemism for, you know, not just drums. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, that's that's kind of, we're going, kind of going off tangent. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, yeah. but that segue, I'm, I'm a fan of bands. I follow local bands, especially. I'm us- you can usually find me at, I don't know, you can find me in the South. Like at, at La Fuerza Plaza, seeing the South Bands, or you can find me in the North at Root and Moe's following. Oh, like Sina, Sina, you know, Sina, um, court. Yeah, wait, Sina Over October, Liana Nara. Ooh. Those guys, Bana Harbera, are batchmates from, you know, the creative scene, the local creative scene, making music. You're batchmates? Those, most of those people, they graduated at the same time oh. we did. And now they're, make, they're doing their own thing. I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. it's cool, right? They're the new breed of OPM. So yeah, we're, we have our own fandoms. There really is a community. My general idea is um, UP Music Circle. A lot uh, of bands sprung sprung from UP Music Circle. So I, th- then again, the E-heads were really from UP. Yeah. And they started a new wave of OPM. So yeah. <laughs> kudos to you and your alma mater. <laughs> Thank you. So It's so nice to watch them perform. <laughs> I haven't seen them live. I guess it's something... A lot of us millennials will want to, and we wish yeah. we did. <laughs> please. I think I, s- I watched them when I was a kid because they often perform in UP. In UP, so, all right. Yeah. So you grew up in UP. Yeah, I grew up in UP. So okay. being part of this community, does it help you? Oh, mm, tough. Because uh, generally, I do have a group of friends who are in- interested in anime, and that's often what we talk about. Right now, our yeah. our group chat is full of screenshots from the game because they're also playing. The g- they're the ones who drag me into this hell. Yeah, but these are like people you've met in person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, cool. these are people I've met in person, and um, yeah, it helps me because I feel like this is something that we engage in together. Na. Hindi ako mag-isa pag naglalaro ako nito. Pag may nangyaring masaya oh. sa akin doon sa laro, I can share it to There's them. There's people you can share it with. Yeah. No? Or, whereas if it's just your family who's not into it, parang they'll be like, ay, kaka-computer na yan. <laughs> <laughs> diba yun yun yun? Diba? I don't know. Sasabi ng ibang matatanda na pag kaka-computer, parang wala ka ng social life. Pero yeah, no. lumalabas, actually, no, there's a shared community of people who love the game or yeah. what, whatever it is you're binging. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Okay. Totoo Okay. I mean, sometimes though, parang, it does become a bit of, uh, it takes a bit of my time, to be honest. Cause mm, yeah, you use productivity. Yeah, productivity. But hey, were you able to come up with all of this research for the <laughs> podcast? Because oh Kat is also a our research head, so yeah. like, you know. We have at least 20 pages of notes. Also, yeah. one of my um, members helped. Hi, Rachel Lane, if you're listening. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel Lane. And um, our content is very grounded, guys. <laughs> so awesome. So, yeah. yeah. But how about you, Pao? Do you see a lot of familiar faces in gigs? Well, I think that's the difference between our fandoms. Mm-hmm. Yours is more of 
the community is virtual. Yeah, yeah. You're not local. Like, you can be in your room with family who doesn't know what you're doing. <laughs> but you could also feel connected to the same community. Maybe 80% are also in the room without family who gets what they're doing. I'm just speculating. But it's possible. Yeah. But you get each other online. Yeah. So it's a non-spatial, non-local community. Yeah. Whereas the local music industry, it's a bit of both. Mm. Because there are a lot of people who do go out of their way to watch gigs. They spend mm. their hard-earned cash or their baon <laughs> to support these gigs after class or after work, in my case. <laughs> but then there are also fans, I was there before, who I was into them, but I didn't have money yet. Mm-hmm. But I connected by, by... I mean, you know, we live in an era of social media. You can mm. actually chat your bands. Mm. I think that's something like Gen Xers and 80s people couldn't do at that time. Mm. Like, their bands were really at a pedestal. But now when you actually can easily talk to them with a Facebook message or Twitter direct message, parang it kind of removes the fog of celebrity, but in a good way. Because mm-hmm. you're like, oh, wow, they're human too. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So, a lot of articles, they talk about how being in fandoms or being a fan can help you connect with people, but also isolate you. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's, it's, there are two uh, sides to every like story. Like a lot so of things. Tell us more about this. What did the research show? Okay. Kaka? So, oh my gosh. Cool. Oh my God. This is making me nervous. But okay. Um, yeah. So basically, a lot of articles did warn, uh, did uh, talk about how, mm-hmm. yeah, again, with the whole community aspect that uh, mm-hmm. you, you build, uh, you see the familiar faces or you get to talk about something even if you don't really know that person. You only know their Twitter handle, for yeah. example. But uh, a lot of also other articles warned about this. Uh, 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 warned about using uh, of being a fan of using celebrities as a as a coping mechanism, because it could also be unhealthy in a way that you're avoiding your problems. So it's a, like an escape. Yeah, it's an escape. In a way, it's an escape. Parang yeah. The main the main articles. Uh, most articles talk about uh, this concept uh, called uh, celebrity worship. Celebrity worship. Yeah. yeah. Something I've heard of before. <laughs> Maybe please tell us more. Okay. Wait. So there's yeah. a, there's an actual model made by uh, uh, these people. John, uh, I'm so sorry if I pronounce names wrong. I, I don't know. Hey, at least we cited, yeah. Uh, so, so, I mean, right? <laughs> so yeah. these are actually, I think, some of these articles are open, so you might yeah. actually... Um, open source research. You might be able... Some of Great. them. Not okay. all of them, though. I'm yeah. so sorry. But so we actually paid for some of these articles? No. Um, I I researched... I just researched. And, okay. Uh, also, because I'm still a student, I do uh, You were have, able to get access. Yeah, I was able to have get access. Yeah. Cool. So, kids, doing your thesis, <laughs> you know, utilize your student points while you can. Yeah. Like that, your library actually helps a lot. <laughs> yeah. So you know, parang. And okay, so like going back. Um, John Malk B. Yeah. Lin E. Makutchon. Ah, how do I speak? Lin E. Makutchon. The, the we we're, were talking about the uh, bad aspects. The, yeah. the, the harmful aspects of being a fandom. They basically they're to them it's like wait I okay. have to find the actual term. I'm so sorry. Celebrity attitude scale. So basically, they're... A scale? Yeah, it's a scale. It's like, they're right. saying that being interested... This is celebrity worship, by the way. Yeah, it's, we're talking it's, about celebrity it's, worship. It's, One of the bad... Not necessarily bad morally, but like... More, detrimental to your uh, like social, physical, uh, mental health. I guess. Um, yeah, because... Yeah. The way you focus on... Celeb- uh, it's really a focus on celebrities, on, on these people who are popular, and you see them on TV and me- uh-huh. in news. Uh-huh. And so it's not just celebrities. It can yeah, be a journalist. It could be a journalist. It could be an athlete. An it athlete. could be a musician. Oh yeah, or a, even even a prof, like the yeah. Red Richard Hadrian guy. I don't know. But like he's the guy who who, who usually talks about the Duterte administration. Oh. He gets interviewed by international bodies. Oh, okay. Some, okay, yeah, okay. He's a prof and uh, some people say okay. he's like the Atom Araulo of, oh. of that because he's young and kinda poggy. I have not watched He's news. poggy. 
for a long time. Yeah, but... I have watched, not watched TV news. I'm still in the know of what's happening in society, yeah, guys. Yeah, but like but TV, like, right? TV. Like, what, what century does that belong to? <laughs> oh my God, that's like so 20th century. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so sorry. Okay. It sounds so millennial right now. Okay, so like... It's you actually said an that addiction. That celebrity model. worship is a bad thing. It no, they're mod. It's a not scale. Not necessarily. It's a, an attitude it's a, it's, scale. It's a scale. It's a spectrum. It's like right. they're they're saying it's like an addiction model. Okay, it's an addiction yeah. model. Parang the more you uh, get exposed, and especially since mass media actually wants you to quote unquote consume more of these person yeah, of these celebrities. It's designed to keep you hooked. Yeah, on it. they. It's designed to keep the more you progress through these they want you to scale. keep using the app yeah keep a tab open yeah follow the celebrity in social media yeah. follow the, their instagram yeah. follow their twitter follow their facebook they page want, i think i think today business the business and calls it user engagement oh yeah they want to maintain user engagement with uh, the product or service now the product is celebrities actually in, i read somewhere that the product two neuroscientists uh, worked on this and you can check it out in Time Magazine. Um, <laughs> this is pro- not part of my research. It's yeah, all pow. <laughs> we're... Because like, I have a background in communication and studies. Kat has a background in economics. But yeah. Mental health is our shared advocacy. Mm-hmm. So they said that apps are really trying to keep, keep us hooked on them. Especially games. Mobile game apps. Too. Not Yeah, mobile games. I mean, that's more obvious but on yeah. a more subtle level. Social media and even news websites are trying to keep us hooked on them. Mm-hmm. Notice how when you scroll down, it always leads to a new article. It never ends. Oh. Because the product, as you said, the product isn't the celebrity. We are the product. Oh. So oh. these yeah. companies... I, I remember that. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, you probably took this up in how the economy works today in the di- di- digital age. Basically, they promise advertisers that our content will keep our users hooked. So your ads can keep popping up. Attention is the real commodity. Yes, yes. You nailed it, Kat. Ha. That's the economist of the 21st century. Oh, no. Yeah, represent. I wish I was a good economist most of the time. Oh, come on, man. I don't need to be self-deprecating. Okay, all right. you're, doing your good, you're doing a good job That's triangulating good. Okay. your sources. Okay, thank you. All right, so going back. Going back. So, yeah, so... Uh, as as the dictionary and as a paper defined it before, fandom includes attitudes. And mm. sometimes these attitudes can be addictive in a sense yeah. that they make us escape from the problems that mm. we have to deal with. In in the model, it starts off kind okay. of safe. Um, it starts off with uh, what they would call entertainment social. You Social entertainment? Yeah, entertainment social. It's entertainment social. E.S. Yes. I don't know why they did it like that, okay. but okay. Yeah. Entertainment social is basically um, you just like the celebrity because they're entertaining. Uh, you yeah. you connect with other people because uh-huh. both of you found that found find that celebrity entertaining. Um, but then when it, uh, so they actually have a test for this for this. Okay. The, it's a scale after all. So yeah. some of the questions are my friends and I like to discuss what my favorite celebrity has done mm-hmm. or learning the life story of my favorite celebrity is a lot of fun. Ma, ma, yeah. But then when you kind of move up the scale, there's intense personal where in you kind of it becomes more intense. It's more personal. Mm-hmm. You kind of use the celebrity to help you form an identity. Mm. Um... So, some of the questions here are, I consider my favorite celebrity to be my soulmate. Uh, um, yeah. I have frequent thoughts about my celebrity even when I don't want to. It's yeah. kind of a bit more intense than ES. And then, there's the more ex- the most extreme one is borderline pathological. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so, the, so, as it's uh, really extreme attitudes individuals may hold toward their celebrity. So, mm-hmm. so some of the questions here is, if someone gave me several thousand dollars to do with as I please, I would consider spending it on a personal possession like a napkin or a paper plate once used by my favorite celebrity. Or if I were lucky enough to meet my favorite celebrity and he or she asked me to do something illegal as a favor, I would probably do it. It's really so more of the intense scale. On, that's the word earlier, Parang was like, an enthusiastic devotee, says the Merriam-Webster dictionary. Yeah. I'm like, that's crazy. It sounds like religion, but now that you start to describe <laughs> the pathological level yeah. of fandom, it. But how about for fandoms that don't necessarily follow a celebrity? 
didn't your research show yeah, that celebrity yeah. can also be redefined to encompass more than just actors, actresses, and Hollywood and locally in in the entertainment industry? To be honest, there's on there there are some that focus on genres like science fiction. Yeah. Um, more on the general topics. Okay, so, so, so yeah, we can extend the de- the definition of celebrity. Perhaps yeah, we can. Okay. Yeah, well, I think so. Okay. But keep in mind that we are kind of when we mean by celebrity worship when we're discussing this we are talking more now about more than just celebrities. So. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what we meant by expanding the uh, yeah. definition so, of celebrity. Just read, uh, listeners, be. Uh, yeah. So just 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 so you know, there's a nuanced. Uh, in this discussion. Yeah, when we talk, when we use the word celebrity. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of connection. Uh, there's a lot of research about how maybe when people have depression or anxiety, yeah, um, they're more inclined to, mm-hmm. um, have uh, to get into celebrity worship, and oh. some supports it. Some are weak, for example, sa ano Philippine, and then some what, what also. What do you mean weak? I mean evidence or support. Some have weak, uh, parang. Some some studies have weak associations. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, evidence. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But some do have strong evidence. So the data is more mostly middling. Yeah. It's not conclusive, but it's not inconclusive either. Yeah. There's, okay. It's um most of the research done is around uh, 20, 2007, 2011. So it's still a pretty young yeah field field. So okay. there's still more to learn. Great. Yeah. So, and I think if any psychology majors are interested in this topic, yeah, it's, topic, a, potential right? it's topic. a potential topic. Go oh, build on it, guys. Like there's a, actually a Filipino, yeah, the the what we've mentioned before, mm-hmm. the UST students. Yeah, they studied fandom. They studied fandom, and, and uh, in their in their study, they were talking about how maybe being part of a fandom, an established group, mm-hmm. would help buffer, um, would help would help uh you. And since the connection of community would help you mentally, yeah. uh, they're hoping that... Um, so basically, their hypothesis is if you're part of a fandom, mm-hmm. your social support of that, the social support of that fandom will act as a buffer against poor mental health. Okay, so... Versus someone who's not... Who is a fan, but not part of a fandom. Oh, but ah, so they make a distinction. Yeah, but the results were... Mm. were inconclusive they were, it was difficult for them to draw causal conclusions in fact our fandom members scored significantly higher um in in higher than non fandoms on the measures of celebrity worship mm. or to determine why negative relationships between measures of mental health and attraction to one's favorite celebrity okay so, yeah. but yeah. there isn't a scale yet on fandom as a whole yeah. For right now, the scale is limited to celebrity worship. Yeah. But I celebrity guess we could include scale. it to expand into fandom because essentially when you're a fan of something, you're not just a fan of like the music per se Mm-mm. or the art or, or, or like the uh, film, but you're also a fan of the personalities yeah. who are creating uh, the media that you consume, whether it's a filmmaker or an actor, actress in the film. Mm-mm. Or uh, the front man, front woman of a band, mm-hmm. or even an anime character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, my cousin is getting married, and here I am crushing on an anime character. <laughs> but, like, all's good, man. All's good. I mean, to each his own, to, to each his own pace. Oh, my God. All right. So. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so, it's a double edged sword. Yeah, it's basically. Is. Remember how, I know. So, like, on one end, there's a community form. Yeah. Yeah. On the other end, there is obsession, mm-hmm. which also makes you escape from your problems mm-hmm. rather than face them. Rather than face about, what are things about myself that I can improve on? Instead, you're thinking about, I want to meet my celebrity. Mm-hmm. Or something like that. Yeah. yeah. In a way, parang, I see why it's an escape. Because maybe you have so many crappy things going on for you right now. And... You see this manufactured image of a celebrity and Who's they're like... having a good life. Yeah, like it seems perfect well, on paper. Yeah. And then so like, I wish my life was like them. Yeah, But I true. guess to make it healthy, we should just remind ourselves that it's manufactured, guys. <laughs> like out of the camera. They're different people. 
I would know because I work in I work in entertainment as well. I work and sometimes a lot of things off the record are not what they are on record. So it might help us to remember that the people we look up to are human too. And I think this also includes not just like people in the entertainment mm. industry, but even like our favorite authors. Mm-hmm. Our, our favorite game designers and if you're like me who looks up to fictional characters that's why they're fictional characters <laughs> yeah yeah it's interesting right ultimately Part- you have to go back to your own life yeah not forget that ultimately there's another bigger story that's happening mm, and that's your own life but I hear there's also like an economic like component to find yeah. <laughs> you, you want to dive into that right now <laughs> mm. Yeah, because um, you know how we when Pao and I were talking about this, uh, when we were prepping, we were talking about how, uh, he he was talking about how spending his hard earned cash on gigs, and I was uh discussing about how, I sometimes don't feel feel as much as a fan as my other friends do because they actually spend money, and uh, yeah. buy merchandise mm-hmm. and. And uh, yeah, basically spend their money on actually, figurines and stuffed toys. There are yeah. fandoms we actually wish we could be a part of, but we can't because <laughs> yeah, we can't afford it. Yeah. Like there's a time when a lot, like the latest consoles. Oh my god! Yeah. I I can't afford a PS4 nor even a PS3. And when I was a kid, parang I got a PS1 kind of late. <laughs> I never had a DS. And mm-hmm. like when something is out on an emulator. That's usually like eight years after everyone has finished the campaign. Mm. So like you're oh, behind. You're behind. You're like, oh my god, this is such a great story. But why didn't I? Now I know what my friends were talking about eight years ago. So <laughs> sometimes you can also feel isolated yeah, by a fandom. True. Yeah, that's true. You know how uh, in in anime fandom in weeb culture we were uh, there are tweets going around how it's currently exhausting. Exhausting. Because you know how. There's so many new anime every season. Oh yeah. And there's oh. always a new trend every season. Mm. Winter winter, summer, mm. all anime. And it's exhausting to catch up because um w- once you actually get finish an anime and if you're like me who likes to kind of mull over it and kind of watch it over and over again Dig- because really you, the yeah, story. Really digest the story. Not, yeah. Not being And then you the next you series. finish it and you're like where, and and you see all these people talking about they it. They moved on to. They moved on to the next anime. Like, so, parang you want a meaningful discussion about one anime. Yeah. But the industry moves so fast. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And you can't catch up, especially for me. I have slow Wi-Fi. Yeah. I don't have a Crunchyroll account. Dude, I haven't even paid the Wi-Fi bill, so I really can't oh, Netflix man, binge. Dude. Yeah. Um, but you also kind of feel bad because you can't support the creators who made that wonderful thing that you love because you don't have the money to all support them. So I'm a bit nuanced. Like if it's a local film, I, I, pay, I pay for it with mm-hmm. my money. But what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to drive is, um, yeah, there really is an economic component to fandoms as well. Mm-hmm. If you don't, if you can't afford a PS4, then you kind of out isolated from the PS4 gamer community. Something like that. It's kind of interesting because in the book, uh, although I can't remember the author, but in the same book that uh, we were, I was, I read a whole entire book for this podcast. It's called The Adoring Audience. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that was edited by Lisa A. Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a collection of essays by different authors edited by Lisa A. Lewis. Uh, it's basically about fandom and okay. how society and, and they were talking about how we're, we're accumulating cultural capital. Oh, okay. I I know this. I watched this movie, ah. this really old classic. Therefore, so I have. So you watch to get I, class. Yeah, you. In, social in, capital. Social capital social in that in that of, specific fandom. Oh, like look at me! I I understand classical music, <laughs> and you plebs don't get it. You and your EDM <laughs> but, but, schnazzle. But in a fandom aspect, for example, yeah. um, Studio Ghibli would be considered like. Metro highbrow. Highbrow anime high or like concept. if you're. Uh, if you're really into a very specific um, analysis, you, the people could actually come to you and hear your thoughts about it because you have a kind of reputation, reputation and know-how on that specific part of that 
fandom. For example, okay. I was amused last night because I was watching Mother's Basement talk about gambling anime. And mm. it was interesting because... What's Mother's Basement? Oh, it's he, he is a YouTuber who okay. analyzes anime. Cool, okay. Yeah. So, are the opinion leaders like that? Yeah, something like that. That's how he accumulates... Cultural... Cultural capital. capital. Like it's, the authority on... Yeah. I mean, anime, the authority on. I don't think he would call. It, no, but I like in, in, general, in, in general, in general, in, in general, his his opinion matters yeah. to people so, like Joey, the yeah, anime man, or cultural or, capital is about being an authority on something. Yeah, something or that re- Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I guess even yeah. But to some people, to normies, what we'd call normies in weebs, those who. Those who don't like anime culture or Japanese pop culture are called normies. And, or, in, I think right now the, to- the term is evolving into people who just generally don't have a very focused hobby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, um, and, uh, in this art, in an article I read by Jolly Jensen in the book that I discussed, the Adoring Audience, uh, mm. and they were talking about how we perceive fans as these other, and Jolly Jensen was basically arguing that we are technically all fans, just that people who don't call themselves fans are fans of really high culture things like fine arts, classical music. One that you would not necessarily consider as fan, yeah. But they they're still fans because they have an interest in it. They yeah. they collect they collect paintings. So they collect. There's really a, a social economic aspect to it. Yeah, that's that's true. Because like tickets for classical music concerts are really expensive. Yes, that's true. Tickets to plays like mm-hmm. uh, another thing, parang. I may not have consoles, but I'm getting into theater. But I'm also aware that theater is pretty expensive. Yeah. Theater tickets are expensive. So and you have to go, if you really want to go to the really popular ones, yeah. you have to go to New York. Or so our, our fandoms are also determined by our ability to uh, consume culture. Right. But and then, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think you were trying to say na parang people tend to be snobbish too. Yeah. Like they say, I fan ka lang ng anime, mababang uri uh, yun. Where, and where that as, hurts people. Yeah. Whereas ako, into fine art ako. So, you know, medyo... No one says that in person. But it's implied in interactions. <laughs> yeah. and some fandoms have a stigma, right? Um, yeah. For example, um, so we found this article about how... About boy, boy bands in, boy bands in specific. And they were talking about One Direction. And they were, uh, they were talking about how boy bands, this particular you pop culture fandom that. is... One is so <laughs> get out, get out. But it, it makes sense. I get know, out, out of my head. head. <laughs> Come into my <laughs> life instead. See, fandom. Uh, fandom. Basically. But, oh, man, no. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. But yeah, so going back, so, so they studied back. boy bands? And yeah, they... It's an. It was an analysis, and um, okay. basically, it was for this twenty sixteen EMP pop culture, pop culture conference. Oh. Yeah, they they do that. Yeah, kind cultural of impress- studies. Yeah, so it's an annual music writing and academia convention in Seattle wow. in so each cool. April. So basically, fandom and the internet, and they were talking about intersection of extreme pop fandoms, especially focus on young female audience and mental health. Yeah. So. So the article talks about how in tech, um, you have to agree that historically teen pop or boy band fandom, Beatles, mm. One Direction. Yeah, I, I mean, the I Beatles think, were the boy bands of the day. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. I mean, they they were. <laughs> uh, I mean, can you imagine One Direction forty years from now being our Beatles? That's basically that's true. That's true because they disbanded, made their own solo acts. Yeah. <laughs> and then. They're gonna be a classic 40 years from now. Oh my god, guys. You know, it's bizarre, right? Yeah. But like, this, this particular fandom yeah. has existed in a weird space of cultural celebration and also critical marginalization. So, marginalization. Yeah. Okay. Really deep word. Yeah, but... <laughs> but you, in, in essence, yeah. in essence, um, fans of... Fans Mm-hmm. Uh, members of this fandom are considered uncool. Mm. Um, uh, there's a certain dismissal of their interests. Stigma. It's a stigma. Yeah. Um, 
I actually asked a friend if it's okay to share this story. Yeah. And uh, I remember she was so upset. I met her when in college, and yeah. she told me that there was one class where she talked. You, you know how the whole introduction comes in? La? What's your interest? What's your name? Your yeah, course, your like interest, start of the year. The start right? of the year. So just and, harmless, not yeah, friendly. That's where she said, I'm, I love One Direction. Mm-hmm. And she honestly felt hurt because the class laughed at her, uh, and and I think I don't know, I don't I hope that she's been she's able to move on. Yeah. But when I met her, she was really really upset about it, okay. and you can it kind of you can kind of see how it really is, it really is outright dismissive that it's seen as childish. Oh yeah. Their emotions anime are, in Japan anime. is looked down upon by mainstream Japanese culture. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. So yeah, and. Basically, it's weird, but that. But yeah, that's why it helps to remind us that even people who consume high culture in a way are part of a fandom. Yeah. Because going back to the definition. Yes, and that's why <laughs> definitions help, guys. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can't, you can't say, oh, but it's a world that's postmodern. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on. It's just a cop out. So, yeah, going back, whatever it is you support, I think being a fan involves enthusiastic devotion mm. whether it's a sport or a performing art or even a fine high art usually as a spectator not a content creator an ardent admirer or enthusiast yeah, yeah. whether it's Zayn Malik or Beethoven or Tchaikovsky oh right what I liked about this oh, speaking of Zayn Malik what I liked about this um, yeah. this uh, the article aside from it yeah. talking about how um, how technically one Fans are just trying their best to increase their self esteem, yeah. especially through lyrics, yeah. lyrics, and you know, um, um, through healthy identification. Yeah. Um. What was interesting was no healthy. It also discussed about after Zayn Malik left. Yeah. It cool. discussed about how when. Bakal na to fan girl lang siya. Yeah. I did. I saw actual research though. Okay. <laughs> no, it's it's an actual essay. That's er- okay. That has, that is good. I don't Th- know. That's it, taking your fandom to the next level. Yeah. To the academia. Technically, isn't it? Is but it? Yeah. Academia is basically being yeah. a big fan of something. Yeah, to you're, be, you're a fan of Beatles, then become an etymologist. Yeah. I mean, like Beatles, not the band, like 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 insects, <laughs> or like. Dude, okay. have you seen cultural prof- cultural studies professors nerd out? Yeah, to be honest, it's like watching a fandom. Yeah, that's basically it. Actually, yeah. one of the know one of the Jolly Jensen basically admitted that he is also he just he is also a fan, but he's just very he just shows it in a very academic form, objective way, you know, in a very objective way. But, but it, that means that there's a healthy balance. You can still be a fan of something. Yeah. But in a healthy way. I guess so. In a non-obsessive, That's objective true. way. Oh, wait. Anyways, so, going yeah, back going to back. Zayn Malik. Okay. It was interesting because after Zayn Malik left the band, yeah. CNN actually ran a, sim- a step-by-step guide on how people can deal with, how can teens, how can families, uh, parents deal with a child who's... Upset. Upset. Really, really upset. And they were talking about how this is actually... A lot like a grief process, a process of grief. It's really well. Like, yeah. The band breaking up really affected a lot of kids. A lot, yeah, like, a lot of them. So there's actual steps about never underestimate pe- the depths of adolescent yeah. emotions. So people might dismiss it as, ah, jeez, just yeah. kids being kids. Yeah, but, but in reality... It means something to yeah, a person. I guess these are people you look up to yeah. during your formative years. Yeah, that's true. I mean, w- we like to dismiss it, but it... it but it's something valuable to them, right? We're coming from a place of privilege, and that's the privilege of experience and years. But these are people still forming yeah. their experience so, yeah. of the world. It's it's basically how. Yeah. It's interesting how it's becoming more of how CNN actually, although actually made the guide. Yeah, but to, to I don't have, know. When I was just reading it, it still kind of felt the tone was still kind of patronizing. But yeah, yeah. But I could imagine it was still. It was still, you know, parang something. Like, Pagbigyan mo mga bata yun, parang uh, ganun ba yung yeah, tone? Medyo may pagkaganun. Medyo, medyo. It wasn't super exactly blatant. Exactly like that. But, but like, it, oh, it's, you know, it's something kids go through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it, it was kind of interesting because they actually had very solid advice. And like, advice which I think you could apply to, to, yeah. to the grieving process as a whole. Yeah. Parang there was like, looks for, uh, no, yeah, never underestimate. Yeah. Look for signs of self-harm. Because wow. th- it was really an intense m- 
moment daw talaga. So, yeah. and then encourage them to self-talk themselves like no one has died. There's yeah. still plans for the future. Um, there's still a future. There's still a future. And, hindi pa tapos lahat. Yeah, hindi pa tapos lahat. And it's interesting. Okay. So, yeah. Respect. Yeah, ayun. It's just, uh, Jensen has touched upon this that we always look at a fan either in two ways. The obsessed loner who stalks their celebrities. Yeah, caricatures. Caricatures or... versus those who, um, who just, uh, 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 versus the the crazy crowd. The, like the, the mass of screaming, screaming fangirls. Yeah, the, scre- the mass so of screaming fangirls. Two negative fangirls. stereotypes. Yeah. And often, that's just... That's just like an extreme way of putting it. Yeah. Many healthy fans are actually, as we pointed out earlier, mm. academicians <laughs> who are just so passionate about the, what they what they love to they take it to the point of scrutinizing what they're passionate about. Yeah. Huh. All right. All right. So so far we talked that we we defined what fans and fandoms are. Yeah. Basically, really, a fan is an enthusiastic uh, person who follows. Not necessarily a celebrity, but it can be a sport, the literary community, mm. as a spectator, aka mm. non content creator. And the fandom is the community or the attitude of being a fan, which can be healthy or unhealthy. Mm. And then we, we, we touched on the economic implications of what it means. I mean, of how people get into fandoms, there are certain barriers to entry, like the mm. price of a console, the price of tickets, mm. access. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Because we like to treat them as others. And, and They're the, just the same as us, right? The very human tendency to other people based yeah. on what you like. So, so I mean, you might say um, discrimination is just about ethnicity, but maybe there's also a very subtle form of discrimination mm. based on what you identify with, mm. with your culture. Because, like, we live in an era of globalization in a sense that communities are non-local anymore. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. right. I mean, yeah. you told me, like... There were... there In the book that I read, but it's a different chapter. Um, they yeah, were talking about... The one by about, Lisa A. Lewis? Yeah. The, the adoring audience? Yeah. Okay, so they also talked about non-local communities. Yeah, non-local communities. How... Okay. How... It's interesting because they were talking about how, you know how conventions often occur global, yeah. in a global scale or st- Comic in con, Comic Cons. In America, it happens state to state. And what, they, what they discuss is how there are people who actually meet in one con in another country or in another so state it's a, it's a and then meet tribe. again. Yeah, it's a traveling community and they meet again yeah. in another place. Or, or closer to home, like... Like you said, right? let's say you're playing that game. And, and your mom's like, Ay, anak, kaka-computer mo na naman yan. Tapos, akala nila... Kaka-cellphone kasi. Kaka-cellphone, wala kang social life. Lumabas ka nga at magpatintero. Tapos, yun pala, your patintero is, there's a community of kids who are also getting shouted at by their moms. Probably. <laughs> Knowing my friends, yes. But, yeah, but you're all bonding over the shared, yeah. the shared fandom. And so it shows that community is not just who your next door neighbors are, yeah. who's in the room with you, but it's also by what you identify with. Mm. And that's great because it shows that, you know, it can happen, it's an increasingly connected world, but at the same time, the human tendency to see yourself as above other groups of people somehow persists. Oh my God. Like, there's and so discrimination, drama often happens stigma. in fandoms, right? Stigma, so, stigma. So, yeah. The fact that, like, people stigmatize anime fans or, 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 or boy band fans. So... Ultimately, and, it's just about being nice to each other. <laughs> In a sense, though, fandoms also kind of have... Toxicity? Yes. Mm, they, they sometimes feel like they're superior. Yeah, that's so, true. Whether you're not or you're part of a fandom, there's really that tendency to see yourself above mm. groups of people. Because we're... Yeah. Um, in, also, I'm... Yeah. Honestly, if you're really interested in this topic, I really suggest the book. <laughs> yeah, the book is Adoring Audience, it's edited by Lisa A. Lewis, Lewis. Which, is, which is the primary source for many of the discussions that in the past hour. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, they were talking about how fandoms were very, were very particular about 
who yeah. gets who who's identified in this or, or like Marvel, right? Like how the Marvel Cinematic Universe <laughs> is getting like new fans into the comics and old fans are like, no, <laughs> no, like keep them out. We don't want them. But that's not the point. <laughs> Right? It's about shared love for something. That's true, that's true. So there's like discrimination from one group to another, another. aka group. anime fans versus non-anime fans. Normies, I like to call them normies. Mm. I'm and sorry. then within the fandom, <laughs> within the new fandoms. versus old fans. Yeah. Like, why are the normies entering our camp? <laughs> so, like, that human tendency to other people is, I guess, that's the real culprit mm. here. I remember when Gano, yeah. Joe, I know, Joey the anime man, if, any, if anyone is interested, yeah. like, you guys know him anyways. If those who are interested in anime probably yeah. knows him because yeah. he's 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 they a very well known YouTuber, yeah. yeah. Anime YouTuber. Mm -hmm. Um there were there were fans of a very I, I don't know actually uh, again, there's too many new animes but I, I can't yeah. I can't catch up. But there was this anime that got uh, that was currently air airing. Yeah. And then some people did not like what happened in the canon what? in the oh. in the episode so ah gets parang yung mga debates uh, about eh, this is this does not align with the continuity yeah, of the blah, blah, blah. or like i don't like what you did to this character she, she's my wife or ah, yeah. i mean i, I like think that. to an extent there are healthy disagreements yeah but no this one really went to the extreme okay. because they were actually sending death threats to oh, the God. creators That's so toxic. and joey joey the anime man was like no don't why are you doing this? You're setting up a bad example for us who love anime. You're, we are yeah. already stigmatized enough. Why are you mm. doing this? Yeah. Right? yeah. I, so it, it shows the problems within fandoms overlap. Mm. People who are unhealthily obsessed with a certain fandom mm. can tarnish the group as a whole, mm. thus adding to the mm. social stigma. So it kind of it connects what yeah. we talked about earlier. Connects. Yeah. And Oof. it's it's kind of yeah, it's a lot to take in. Yeah, <laughs> it just it feels it's not it's not fun. Okay. I, I like I don't know if people are like trolls and they they like uh, uh, they like, like doing like, things. Sock net breaks really help. Uh, but it's not fun for people who just want to enjoy, just want to really just yeah. sit down after a long day of yeah. work, after a long day of studying, and they see all these. Uh, criticism against being an anime, and they didn't know they didn't do anything, but other people did. Yeah. And then they feel like as a, as uh -huh. as a group, as a whole, we have to be responsible for each other. Yeah, even for the bad members. Yeah, and I don't know. It's just okay. adds to the stress sometimes, and sometimes yeah. you just yeah. also don't want to be part of a fandom. You, you know like, those comments like, mm, "This like, is why no, I left this don't... fandom." Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why I left this oh, fandom. Oh, personally, I don't want to identify with the Rick and Morty fandom, but I am a big fan of Rick and Morty and mm. I hope they have a season four. <laughs> so, yeah. I like... I think we talked about this before, but we do like Rick and Morty. It dubs into very good themes. Yeah. yeah. But, but that's for another podcast. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe, right? Uh, can, do you want to talk about relationships? Let's talk about relationships. Because, yeah. I don't know, does it strain? Do, do relationships... Because okay. um, mental health is also about other pe uh, co your connection with other people. Yeah, but we did discuss earlier how you find a new community. Oh, yeah. But sometimes... Off screen. When, when you're... For example, you were talking about my family, for example. Ah. Like, does it does it alienate me from my family? I think in a way, mm. yes. Because alienation is not one way in this case. Mm. You might mm. feel stigmatized by people who look down on anime. Mm. But your actions are also inviting part mm -mm. of the stigma in isolating your... In closing yourself off from people who don't share the fandom mm. with you. So I think as a fan, you need to be balanced. Mm. AKA, don't be too obsessed. Um, and um, don't expect the creator. Because uh, again, <laughs> a major definition of fandom is you did not create the content. But there's a tendency for you, the fan, to want to control the content. So and there's um, always don't be obsessed. You can create fan works, man. Yeah. And Woman. Or, or whatever in between. Yeah, when we say man, we mean it in a like non gender gender specific, specific way. way. Yeah. But like, yeah, that's a, that's a lot. That's what's interesting about fandom is, but is that when you don't like what happened in the canon. Yeah. Instead of actually sending death threats to people, yeah. why not create that frustration? Use so, that frustration and create something new, right? Something yeah. that you would like to do. So, I know it sucks, but like, what can you do? It's their it's their work. They mm. have the. You don't have control over. You don't it. have control over what mm. they do with their work, so you might. But it, it's a lesson mm. in accepting that not everything in, in the world can be controlled. And not 
but you can still enjoy it yeah. wholeheartedly. Not all what you want or what well, not you all want the things you, you enjoy want. are necessarily exactly. things under your control. And not all the things that you want to happen will happen. Happen, yeah. So, so. it's a good lesson in that. <laughs> so going back to relationships, you have to be a, a good fan. Because yeah, you. But you also have to be a good person, person. outside of the fandom. Yeah. Remember that the fandom is not your identity. It's a crutch. It's a crutch to create. It's a community. part of who you are, but not it's in your entire being. It's a part of being. who you are, but it's not who you are. So don't forget that you may have a fandom for 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 this game, but the biggest fandom. And this is kind of cheesy. Is <laughs> being part of a greater community, oh, no. <laughs> like your family. At this point, my arms are outstretched, making imaginary rainbows. Yeah, you know what's interesting. Your community, though. your Filipino, your Filipino ness. There's a world beyond the fandom, and in- I think. Oh, oh, right, sorry. We, we go back to those fandoms beyond their fandoms. You know what's interesting, though? Because, like, yeah. you know what's fun about fandoms is, like, the actually the the relationships you create, the, the mods yeah. you form. And what's interesting, you remember my friend, the friend I talked about, the one who felt yeah. hurt because of the one? Yeah. She, what's funny is she moved into K-pop. Oh. Wait, I forgot the name. Oh, no, the, the really popular... Boy band. They, BTS. Are you, BTS, yes, BTS. Yeah, I see a lot of people tweet about Yeah, B- same, same. same. My, my Twitter timeline is flooded with BTS tweets. <laughs> but that's okay. I love, I, I, I'm happy when I see my friends. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're really enjoying it. When Although, I see people enjoying something, yeah. sometimes even if you're not a fan of it, yeah. you just enjoy the fact that people are genuinely enjoying something. Yeah, that's true. Anyways, yeah. this friend found their significant other. Through that community. Through, through that community. Actually, and they're dating now. And they're just really solid. And she's and she's really happy. And I, know, like, ah. I know a mom. She's part of the Liz Quen, uh, the Liz Quen, Liza Soberano, uh, Enrique Hill. Oh my god. Fandom? There's actually Cute. an official street team. And, and there are many unofficial fandoms. And to become the official team means that you get a lot of access to Liz, Liza's and Enrique Mm-mm. Hill's events. Mm-mm. And through that community, she's met She's a she's a mom, but she's taking her master's degree. But through that community, she's met doctors, mm. lawyers, mm. professionals, mm, that's and true. it's a healthy fandom. Yeah, it's nice. Her son joins them sometimes. I think he may not in- be a fan, but he's doing it for <laughs> his mom. So even if you're not a part of the fandom, you can still yeah. be with the community, support each other's support interests. Each other's I guess, interests. Right? Yeah. Well, you know, this is what's interesting because sometimes it goes the focus right now then is the community rather than I mean the, the, the fandom the, the fandom connects fans. them yeah. but they also connect, connect with each other outside. inside yeah so it, it's, it's more it's about the community now rather than the work yeah, yeah be a good fan be happy help you help out your community you yeah. know your actions do have consequences mm. even though you're an on it's online mm-hmm. I know <laughs> Be a good fan to new fans. If you're a new fan, don't be shy. At the same time, be a good fan in a sense that there's a world beyond your fandom. And mm. don't isolate yourself in the tribe. Mm-mm. Yeah. If you're a new fan, also respect the elders as well. Because yeah. they also have a lot of knowledge that they may want to share with you. Yeah. Um, it, just, it goes back to being a decent human being. Yeah. Because yeah. um, basically, if we're all, um, we're all just basically getting along mm. in our similar interests. Though... Um, I guess in a way also conflict can also help discuss uh, yeah there's healthy conflict there's healthy conflict and then there's unnecessary drama yeah I think healthy conflict is when people are genuine mm. unnecessary happens when I, unnecessary drama happens when people's egos kick in or like when they do yeah. these really extreme things yeah I mean I, and we are aware that that those are just the f- the surface fans, yeah. they're, they're, they're apparent because they're loud. Yeah, but there and are a lot of people who are, are really nice. Who are decent people. Yeah. So. And, uh, and they yeah. just want to enjoy something. Yeah. And they just want to enjoy and make new friends. And that's mm-hmm. what Perha- being, Perhaps invite mm-hmm. their existing friends yeah. into, a new, into a new interest. Yeah. So it's just about a celebration of culture, of pop culture. Yeah. Hey, like, this is what I'm into. Yeah. Check it yeah. out. Mm. If it's not your thing, at least you tried something new. Mm-mm. But, you know, it's just about a celebration of cultural products without mm. being obsessed to any of it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's All basically, right. it helps. It helps. To have these kinds of connections. Yeah, because like, like what Kata said earlier, it's not who you are entirely, but mm. it's a part of who you are. And, you know, as the philosophers like to say, we are everything we've 
red. We are the people we've met. We are the experiences we've had. So let's keep it healthy and let's keep it cool, guys. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you. I get the, so um, again, Silakwa PH is an independent art and mental health publication. And watch out for our first print publication coming out at July this year. July 2018. Look out for that. Mm -hmm. You can visit us at silakbo.ph. We're also on social media. Twitter.com slash silakbo.ph. No dot. <laughs> and Facebook.com slash silakbo.mentalhealth. No spaces. No spaces. Be sure to tell us what you thought about this podcast. And if you like it, sure, give us a thumbs up, a heart, or a react. We really would appreciate it. So follow us on Twitter, like our Facebook page for more information and news relevant to art and mental health. And keep a tab open on our events and projects. So yeah, stay tuned for next month's Mental Health Hour episode. So yeah. just a few credits are yeah. in place. Thank you yeah. to, our, to the people who have helped us. Mm -hmm. Hi guys. Thank you Rachelaine for um, yeah, for summarizing. Help. Yeah. Um, thank you Kat for helping this happen. <laughs> Thank you then again, Paolo, for helping this happen as well. And, and thank, thank you, you Axel. Axel, for making it really <laughs> happen <laughs> and happen nicely. Ax uh, for the people who are not aware, Axel is our uh, uh, He, he sound also edited editing. our last episode yeah. and put the music and clean. Basically, he made it happen too. Yeah. So yeah, and thank you to the promotions team. Yes. Behind Silakbo, led by Jan Belmonte. <laughs> And of course, we want to thank the founder of Silakbo and our mom, Lisa Coronel. All right, stay tuned, guys, and stay see tuned. you at the next one. This is Mental Health Hour. Yay, bye, guys. Bye, guys. Okay.